or I hope it's working. <clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and I hope you enjoy eternity later. Okay. I have a story to tell. For some reason, my camera decided to stop filming after that clip that you just saw. And I've been going at it for about half an hour. So, um, if you're ever wondering why I never post on YouTube, calm down. I can do that all over again. Um, what did I say? Today, I'm going to be doing a fantasy book recommendation video. And surprisingly, I haven't done one of those on my channel yet, even though it's kind of like the most obvious thing you would put on a booktube channel. But anyway, maybe I'm saying the best will last. Not saying this is my last video. I don't know why I said that. With the books on my list, it's not like they're the best books out there because as I was going through literally the list 35 minutes before filming this video, well, five minutes before filming the first video, but I didn't film, so, you know, you get what I mean. Uh, I realize I haven't actually read that many fantasy books, but luckily of the ones that I have read, they've been pretty good, so I think they deserve a place on this list. Um, there is obviously a lot more out there that I haven't read, especially some of the really popular ones like Sarah J Maas, Maas, Cassandra Clare, um, Percy Jackson, all that classic stuff. I haven't read them because I'm not really interested. You could say I'm not much of a fantasy person. There's, I'm into specific types of fantasy, so, um, if you're not, then I'm sorry. Uh, but if you have similar tastes to me, then I hope you will enjoy the books that I also enjoyed. Number one on my list is definitely Harry Potter, but it's not Harry Potter. Like, it's not on my list, but just letting you know, you should, everyone in the world should read Harry Potter. Those who have access to Harry Potter should read Harry Potter. Uh, it's amazing. It's just flawless. Well, actually, mm, I'm just going to keep paranoidly checking if it's still filming. Okay, good. <laughs> you might see me doing this a couple of times in the video. Uh, so, the first book on my list that is not Harry Potter is... And if you're my friends and you've heard me rant about this, you'll know which one I'm gonna say. Carry On! By Rainbow Rowell El well, and um, Wayward Son, but that's a bit of a spoiler, so let's just put that one away. So yes, heads up, there's a sequel. Um, it's actually gonna be a trilogy. I don't know when the last book's coming out, but I can't wait! Anyway, it's actually called, technically, the Simon Snow Trilogy. So, the first book, Carry On, is, to put it simply, a YA version of Harry Potter. Lots of the storyline is the same, basically. It follows a main character, Simon Snow, who is the chosen one, like Harry Potter. Except, he is the worst chosen one who's ever been chosen. Um, you can skip over this part of the video if you've heard me talk about Carry On way too many times. I don't blame you at all. But for those of you who have never heard me rant about it, don't miss it. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. They go to a magic school called Watford, which is, you know, like Hogwarts. And it, they're in their last year of school in eighth year. Simon Snow and his arch enemy, who is a vampire, Baz. How could you say no to a vampire? Like, for, right off the bat, that's just okay. That should be a no-brainer. Like, go read this book because there's a vampire. Anyway, I haven't even read Twilight. I might because my friend said I should. Uh, who's obsessed with it. And it follows his friends as well. And it's just everything you wanted in Harry Potter but didn't get, it's in Carry On. Like... There's swearing, there's teenage stuff. It goes from G to M, or maybe even MA. Don't think about that too much. I just, I'm just saying it. Um, there's comedy, romance, adventure, everything you could want. And it's, it's amazing. It's just a whole new culture now, if you didn't know. that There's a Harry on universe. Car I just said Harry on. <gasps> it's a whole universe out there and it's basically like this whole different magic universe and it's amazing. So if you enjoy all those things that I mentioned, I definitely recommend giving this a go. Don't be intimidated by how thick it is. The font is actually pretty big and um, it's a book that follows multiple perspectives. So if you like that, definitely go for Carry On. And also there's a sequel, so like, you know there's more coming. 
don't be despaired. So next books on my list, it's a series, are The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. I'm gonna check again. It's filming, okay good. The Raven Boys and then it's The Dream, the dream Thieves, I believe. I don't sound very professional right now. Blue Lily Lily Blue and The Raven King. How would you explain this series? It's like Welsh mythology mixed with everything fantasy like ghosts, demons, vampires, every single fantasy made up thing that you can think of mushed into one. And it follows these group of four boys, Gansey, Adam, Noah, my favourite one, what's his name? Ronan, sorry. How could I forget Ronan? They are kind of like this group of fancy private school boys and in the first book you get introduced to their relationship with each other and also the addition of a girl who is, what's her name? Lily? No. Blue. Blue was her name. <laughs> Oh my god, well it's blue, lily, lily, blue. It was one of them. It was blue. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's blue. The books kind of follow each, because there's four books, each book kind of has a main plot, obviously. It's got so much humour and like action and romance and it's set in a real world but like there's elements of magic in it so you get like real life but also combined with magical stuff which I think is really cool if you're into like high fantasy which I believe is the proper term I've only heard that term on booktube I'm assuming it means like extreme fantasy where you'd completely go into a different world I have a few recommendations for that but for that the first book follows blue and her she lives with her mom and her family who are all females and they're like um what do you call it they're seers so they like predict the future they're fortune tellers kind of thing and her mom can see the dead apparently so first book kind of follows her mom seeing this boy who is Gansey um and that means that he's going to be dead soon so it follows how she kind of meets with the group of boys and how they kind of form a new friendship and they go on all these adventures and they solve some mysteries, see some ghosts, there's a bit of romance here and there, I don't know why I'm doing this weird thing, I want to stop. But it's just, I'm not very good at describing books I've realised. <laughs> But it's just really good. I like giving out keywords. Like, if you like these things, then you'll like this book, right? Mythology, romance, um, comedy, um, angsty teens, uh, obviously, you know, fantasy. That's the whole recommendation list. Yep, it's filming. <laughs> just checking. Another reason why I love The Raven Cycle so much is because. It is a four part series. You can develop a really deep understanding of the world and the story can dive so much deeper. It's not just, you know, sitting on the shallows. As they say, tip of the iceberg. No, it's like the bottom of the iceberg. I think I just ruined that saying, but you know what I mean. So the next recommendation on my list is, I have a physical book with me. Uh, the Strange, The Dreamer Duology by Lainey Taylor. I know, look how massive these books are. They're literally bigger than my face. Just need to check in my mirror. Yeah, they're bigger than my face. Uh, these are amazing. And, okay. Here's a little bookish thing. I don't like uh, big books. But I'm willing to overlook this because the storyline is amazing. Like, normally I like... This is, like, my ideal book size. This is massive. But it's amazing. So, you know what? It's all good, Lady Taylor. It's not your fault. Maybe it is. I don't know. You control the publishers, right? This is what I'm talking about when I say high fantasy. It's a completely new world. It talks about um, gods. It talks about this whole different world basically where there's gods living up in this citadel. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. And they're kind of like the last of the gods left. And there's still human beings living on the ground underneath them. 
but they kind of believe that all the gods are dead. And it basically follows the ones who are left and how one of them kind of connects with the humans down below and you know what happens, romance, all that. The writing is really lyrical. You literally, it's so like, um, you know in English when they say imagery, this is like imagery times a hundred. You literally feel like you're watching a movie because she describes everything so imagerily, visibly, I don't know. You know what I mean. She paints a picture in front of your eyes to make it sound cheesy, okay? And um, it's kind of hard to hold two books, so I'm just going to. Um, basically all the gods in the citadel have a different, like, power. The main character follows Laszlo Strange, hence Strange the Dreamer. And he's kind of like, he's insignificant, but ironically he's the main character, so obviously not. Definitely hard to wrap your head around at first. Uh, even if you're not into high fantasy, like, I'm not really much of that kind of person. Like, I tend to read more, like, low fantasy, is that even a thing? But even I found, I loved it, obviously. So, I think it's definitely one that once you get into it, you won't be able to stop. You just want to, like, devour the whole thing. Not literally. Read. Uh, hmm, what are my keywords for this one? Gods. Superpowers. Romance. Um, adventure as well. Love and hate, revenge and redemption, destruction and salvation, all... Oh, uh, well, that's talking about the second one, but still, that's basically what these two books are about. Thanks you, thanks you, thank you, Sunday Times bestseller. Wait, who said that? Fall into a mythical world of dread and wonder, moths and nightmares, love and carnage. I really need to up my vocabulary on describing books. So, uh, but as of now, I'll just steal what they say on the books because you can't go wrong with that. Uh, yeah. Prepare to be enchanted. I also stole that from Sun. Last book on my list is uh, the first one that's not a duology or a series. It's The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, and I've heard this one being described as magical realism instead of fantasy, because it is definitely more based in the real world, but there are elements of magic. After I read it, my I was literally, this was my face. It's so poetic. You feel like you're reading a painting in a way, just like looking at all these things that happen, and you're just enjoying the process of reading it. And obviously the storyline's also interesting, but more so, you're enjoying every single word that you're reading because it just, it sounds amazing. Yep, it's still recording, good. Um, and this was one of those books where I finished it and I was like, such an amazing and highly rated book like this surely must have a really deep meaning, but I'm just dumb and I don't understand what it means. I still kind of think that, but then I'm kind of starting to accept, okay, maybe it's just a really cool book and it has like, really nice way of writing. Maybe that's why people like it. It lets you think a lot and it's kind of philosophical in a way. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but oh my god. It follows like this traveling circus and the book gave me an impression that there was like a mask over everything and you really just wanted to like take off the mask and see what is behind it, but you could never really reach that. Like what I'm saying is probably not very clear, but what I'm trying to say, the point is that the book isn't very clear, like, it doesn't really make anything explicit, there's no set in fact stone. Set in stone facts? Uh, you kind of just have to interpret it your own way and a lot of things are implied. We all know we hate that word because of English. What does this imply? And don't worry, there is a main storyline if you're wondering, okay, just sounds really beautiful, but like, is there an actual plot? Yes, there is. It's kind of about these two star-crossed lovers in a way. It follows them in kind of a game of like love and death. It's probably a bit more dramatic than what I'm saying, but still, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, I feel like I've said the one word that I've consistently used to describe all five books on my fantasy recommendation list is amazing. So that should be reason enough for you to read it. And... That's basically it. That's all five recommendations I have on my fantasy list. And I hope that you'll read them because um, they are good. And I myself have a bad habit of not reading books people recommend to me because I'm just like, meh, 
whatever. I'm sorry if I've ever done that to you. <laughs> I'm gonna try and fix my habit. But uh, yeah, if you've read any of those books or if you're going to read those books, please comment below. Like and subscribe for more content. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, my God, excuse me. Why, why is this a thing now? Why do I just burp randomly in my videos? <laughs> Hurry on. Oh, I'm going crazy in isolation. Anyway, I recommend you wreck a hit. Bleh, bleh, bleh.